How do you make the molecular orbital diagram for the molecule B2? Start by looking at the boron atom and writing out the electron configuration for each atom. So by looking at the periodic table, we can see that the electron configuration for boron is equal to 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. However, we're only interested in the valence electrons because that's what's gonna be forming our bonds. So we can just pretty much ignore our 1s2. And the electrons that we're gonna be interest in, interested in in adding into our molecular orbital diagram are gonna be these electrons associated with our valence electron shell, which will be the n equals two sublevel. So we can see from electron configuration that we have two electrons in the 2s orbital and one electron in the 2p orbital. So each individual boron atom will have three electrons and I'll write this in blue actually. We'll have three electrons that it can use to make bonds. So we can now add these electrons into our molecular orbital diagram. So we see that we'll start with our 2s orbitals on the bottom and we'll start in the lowest energy level and add those electrons in there first. So the 2s orbitals can each hold two electrons So we do that for both molecules. And then we'll continue to fill in, or both atoms actually, and then we'll continue to fill in our higher energy atomic orbitals, which will be the three 2p atomic orbitals. So we have one electron left over for each boron atom. We already used two in the 2s orbitals. So we'll add one in on each side. So now that we have our atomic orbitals filled in, these electrons will have to fall in to our molecular orbitals as bonds are formed. So we'll start at the lowest energy, 2s, atomic and molecular orbitals. So we have four electrons here and here. So these will have to fall in to our sigma 2s bonding molecular orbital and our sigma 2s star antibonding molecular orbital. So this lowest energy level can hold two electrons and then this upper energy level here also holds two electrons. And now we can see that this entire area here is filled in with electrons. We can't do anything else here. So now we'll head up to the P atomic, the 2P atomic and molecular orbitals. So we have two electrons, one from each boron, and we have all these molecular orbitals, six molecular orbitals actually, because we have six, six total atomic orbitals. Um, three from each atom. So we must combine those. And the number of orbitals has to be conserved, meaning that we'll have a total of six molecular orbitals. But we're not going to actually fill up all these orbitals because we only have two electrons. We'll start by filling up the lowest energy molecular orbitals first in accordance with the off bat principle. So we have two electrons. So each of these pi 2p molecular orbitals, which are the lowest in energy, will get one electron because we have to fill up each one um, with one electron before any of them can have two. So now this is it. This is our completed molecular orbital diagram for the B2 molecule. And before we move on, we can also provide a little bit of a check here. We know that there's three electrons coming from each boron atom, which must combine to six electrons for the B2 molecule, because we have to conserve the total number of electrons. And we can see if we look at our molecular orbitals, and if we count up all those electrons there, that we have six. So we know that we at least did that part of this diagram correct. And now we can look at other things in association with um, this molecule. For example, we can look at what's called the bond order. And the bond order, BO as it's called, is basically a measure of the stability of a bond and also measures the um, number of electron pairs present between two molecules. And the formula for it is equal to one half times the number of bonding electrons minus the number of in not a delta minus the number of antibonding electrons and we can say that this is one half times the bonding electrons and the bonding electrons are present in the bonding molecular orbitals which are present right here and right there because they don't have a star next to them so we can see that there are four electrons present in bonding molecular orbitals and then we have two electrons present in the anti-bonding sigma 2s star molecular orbital.
So 4 minus 2 is 2, and then 1 half times 2 is just 1. So the bond order for B2 is just 1, which means that one electron pair is present between uh, the boron atoms in this B2 molecule. And this also means that there's a single bond in the B2 molecule. A bond order of 1 corresponds to a single bond. Finally, is the B2 molecule paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? Well, because there are unpaired electrons present in these pi 2p molecular orbitals, what that means is that the B2 molecule must be paramagnetic. Okay, so I can write that out down here. B2 is paramagnetic. And what this means is that the B2 molecule is weakly attracted to an external magnetic field.